On two wheels this week, a ride on Suzuki's new V-Twin, the SV650S. Jeff looks at a new breakdown recovery service, and with the bike buying season well underway, Wayne looks at buying a bike from an auction. Also, the results of our recent BMF ticket competition. The choice of new bikes today is vast, to say the least. There's all sorts. There's sports bikes, cruisers, customs, retros, sports tourers, and all sorts of other things. In fact, the list just goes on and on. But for fans of twin cylinder machines, there's not really that much to choose from, apart from the larger capacity. Things like the big Ducatis, Honda's Firestorm, Suzuki TL1000 maybe, and of course now the new Aprilia. But all that could be about to change because Suzuki have launched a bike into the popular 600cc class. And it's a twin. Suzuki has already enjoyed the lion's share of the middleweight class with their popular 600 Bandit. And now on the back of that success, they're hoping for even more sales from their new SV650. So here it is, the SV650, and this is the S model, the one with the fairing. 645cc, 90 degree twin engine. And it's pretty obvious where the styling inspiration came from for this bike. Of course, it's based on the TL1000. So you might think this should be called the TL650. Well, in case you don't know, the T stands for twin and the L stands for L-shaped twin because a 90 degree twin, of course, is L-shaped. But whoever referred to them as L-shaped twins? Nobody. So now they've changed it and it's quite simply called the SV, Suzuki V-twin. Easy, isn't it? The SV only produces 69 brake horsepower, so you won't find any arm-wrenching acceleration as on a four-cylinder machine. The power delivery is smooth and friendly, and it pulls well at low revs. And the talky nature of the V-Twin means you can afford to get lazy with your gear changing and still have enough power to get some decent drive out of a corner. As we know, it's based on the styling of the TL1000, but that's really where the similarity ends. For instance, there's no rotary damper on this, which made the TL famous, perhaps for all the wrong reasons. On this one, we're back to a fairly basic monoshock, which you can actually adjust for preload, but that's it. And at the front, basic stuff again, 43 mm forks, which are non-adjustable. I think this bike really is built to a price, and perhaps it's the old saying, you get what you pay for. Brakes might not be fancy, but twin discs up front being squeezed by a pair of twin pot calipers and a single disc and twin pot at the rear bring this 169 kilograms of V-twin to a rapid halt. Of course, being a twin, there's a good deal of engine braking as well, and it's fairly easy to get the back end skipping around as you flick down the gears whilst grabbing a big handful of front brake. So we know the motor's good. It's fairly smooth, it's torquey and providing you like the characteristics of a V-twin, there's just about enough power from the 69 horses to cope with most real world situations. The brakes are fine as we've said, the only thing you need to consider is do you like the look of this baby TL1000? If so, then you've no problem. If on the other hand you don't like fairings, then there is an SV650 without the S on the end, which is the naked version. Of course. No fairing, so it's got different clocks, different headlights. The handlebars are slightly higher and the foot pegs are slightly lower and further forward, so there's a little bit of a different riding position. And it's reckoned to be slightly more, shall we say, frisky, a little bit livelier, because it's got an extra tooth on the rear sprocket, which Suzuki say is to compensate for its poorer aerodynamics. Well, if you're worried about aerodynamics, would you really be buying a 650 Twin? I don't think so. Whichever model you choose, this is a bike which inspires great confidence with its relaxed style of riding. Enough power for lots of excitement, but very friendly with it. The SV650S will cost you just under £4,600. And if you don't like the fairing, then the SV650, without the S, is £300 less. 
Suzuki's 600 Bandit took the middleweight class by the scruff of its neck. There's every chance their new V-twin will do the same. Breaking down a car is bad enough, but at least you've got somewhere to wait, somewhere nice and warm inside. Now, if you're on a bike, what are you going to do? If you've got a mobile phone, you can phone someone up, but who are you going to phone? You could phone the RAC because they have just introduced a specialist bike recovery and repair service. And we're down here at, uh, in London at the RAC's repair centre, and we're going to have a word with Amanda Preston, who will tell us what it's all about. RFC currently has about 24 bike specialist units around London and the South East area, but they're going to be rolling out across Glasgow, Birmingham, any city with a high volume of traffic. We think it's very important that our two wheel members receive the exact same level of service that our four wheel members get. They pay the same amount of money and they should be able to get a fix at the roadside and if they can't be fixed at the roadside, they should be entitled to a tow safely on our specially developed bump lock trailer. Okay, you break down, you make a phone call, but what happens next? I asked John Reynolds how it all works. All right, so at the moment we've just received a call from uh, Miss King, who's got a rear wheel punch on a Honda 900 in Trafalgar Square. So what we're doing, we're looking to allocate this breakdown to one of our bike specialists. So if we check on our map, uh, we've got a bike specialist patrol clearing uh, the West One area at the moment. So what I will do is allocate that breakdown to that particular patrol. Many of the patrolmen are bikers themselves, and I asked ZX6 rider and patrolman Doug Harding to show us around his recovery vehicle. So Doug, just give us the lowdown on what we've got in here. I can see a lot of kit in here. Yeah, well we've got the compressor for when we get the punctures on the bikes. The toolbox is actually full of tools, different various tools, specialist tools for bikes as well. We've got the spray cans, chain lube, easy out, like WD-40 type stuff. Um, in the drawer here, we've actually got fuses, split pins, various nuts and bolts, connectors for making electrical connections. And underneath here, we've actually got the aluminium welding kit. What do you actually, I, I know what you're saying, aluminium welding, but I mean, what sort of welding do you, you do? Don't um, end up welding up engine cases? <laughs> Uh, if, if necessary, yes. If it's a, a light, yeah. if somebody has a light light accident, yeah, um, and it's just scuffed it, and the, you know when the scratch goes through, yeah, we'll, we'll repair that if possible. So an alternator cover is the classic thing, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, so what's that? That's the bottle of gas, is it? That's the gas. Yeah, which just fits on the old. This just fits on the old blowtorch. Yeah. All you actually do is, is heat up the actual bit that's cracked, and then just put one of these rods in, and that melts in and makes your new contact. Yeah. Yeah. Very good. Do you polish it at the end as well for the customer? Well, depends on the customer, really. <laughs> Around the back of the van, then, we've got even more kit here. I can see you've even got a floodlight here. This is for nighttime breakdowns. It certainly is, yes. And, and what, what else have we got? I can see over here nuts and bolts and springs. And... Yeah, there's more bits and bobs there. Most of the equipment there is for making up temporary cables, um, accelerator cables, clutch cables, choke cables, even if need be. Right, so you can make all that up on the road? We can make all that up on the road, yes. Oh, excellent stuff, and I can see some manuals there as well. And what we've got here in these boxes? Uh, this is just a, a cordless drill. Uh -huh. Yeah, because you haven't got any handy power supplies on the road, have you? Afraid not, no. There's also a 12 volt soldering iron in there as well. Yeah. So you're not going to be sort of stumped at all, are you, once you're on the road? So you've got a big vice there as well? You've got a four-inch vice, yeah. Yeah, and you've got your hacksaws buried away in here somewhere. There and all in the rest. toolbox at the front. <laughs> yeah, Gordon <laughs> Benny. Now I can see a paddock stand here, and this is for a lot of sports bikes you must come across. Yeah, most of the sports bikes today don't have a centre stand, so we, we carry this just in case of rear wheel punctures. Yeah, do, you, do owners tend to, to realise the sort of trouble they're in when they have a puncture these days on a modern sports bike? I think they realise the expense it's going to cost them for the tyre. <laughs> <laughs> and how do you get on with the, the front end, getting the front wheel out? Because lots of bikes are nose heavy, aren't they, anyway, these days? So do you have a stand for the front end as well? We do, yeah, that's buried away at the front there. Yeah, so nothing daunted. Yeah. What's this? Looks like a bead breaker. It certainly is. Yeah. Now and again, the tyres have to come off, and uh, that just helps, helps do that job. So you, you can do your, your puncture repairs on the road, but if it's a bad split or something, you actually take the tyre off then? We'll take, we'll take the wheel off to start with. Um, if we can source a tyre, then we will replace it. Yeah. In this drawer, we've got an assortment of batteries, which we carry dry. By the time we've filled them up with acid, 
put them on the bike, you're ready to go. No problems there. A small charge for that. <laughs> Only a small charge. <laughs> we we sell the batteries at trade. Yeah. Um, oh, that's good. Any, yeah, yeah, we don't make any profit on them at all. Okay, and what's in this one? In this one, we've got an plugs. assortment yeah. of plugs. Yeah. Um, assortment of inner tubes, and the famous puncture repair kit. All oh, right. Now this is the one you had specially developed, isn't it? This yeah. is yes. This is uh, engineers at the RAC developed this with the company. Yeah. And is it right you tested these at Donington, 130 mile an hour up to on these? They have been tested at them yeah. speeds, yes. Yeah. Have, um, you, have you done that? I haven't, no. <laughs> Obviously we stress that it is a temporary repair yeah. and, and you need to get the proper repair done as soon as possible. Right, okay. And uh, plenty of plugs as well. Because one of the biggest jobs of changing the plugs though is taking half the bike apart these days, isn't it? Fairings and air boxes and whatnot. That's right, yes it is. Um, many of the bikes you can get around that, you can squeeze your hands in. Yeah and just manage to get plugs in and out. But, uh, and wh what about tubes? Do you use those for bikes that have got tubes or do you use it as a temporary repair if the, if the tires, you know, if a tubeless tire's got a real bad hole no. in it or what? No, only for tires that have got tubes. Yeah. Um, with the tubeless ones, we will source a new tire if need be. Yeah, because you're not supposed to fit tubes in tubeless tires, That's are you? That's right, you're not. You'd think that with all this equipment, they could fix anything, but sometimes the bike has to be recovered and that's where their special trailer comes in. The trailer is actually carried on board in flat pack style and can be assembled on the spot in just a few minutes. Doug, now we're in your office, your day-to-day -day office. I can recognise a mobile phone there, but the rest of the kit you've got, just run us through, what's this terminal for a start off? It's your mobile data terminal where all your information comes down for your jobs. Um, incorporated into it is your radio system, two-way radio. You contact with the office if you need any help or if you need to put the vehicle up for a time. So normal calls coming in, you don't hear them verbally, no one's shouting at you then? No, you just get a, an audible bleep on the computer look across and there's your, there's your instructions. Okay. And that's clear enough for you to read or do you sometimes have to stop? I mean, does it scroll through? Or? It does scroll through. Um, the main information that you need, you can actually see as you're driving along. Right. So it's not, not too distracting. Don't want you knocking any bikers over, you know? No, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> and what else have we got here? What's this cassette? Is that a load of information for you? No, that's Guns N' Roses, that one. <laughs> that's our RAC issue then? No, it's afraid not. That's a personal issue. And what's, what's this you got here on, on your knee? This is a CD-ROM that we carry, uh -huh. which disperses all of the paperwork that we yeah. used to carry. Um, there's a mountain of information on this. So, so what have you actually got there? Are sort of all bike data listed on that CD? Yeah, all bikes are listed. Um, all cars are listed as well, actually, on it. And, and, and what sort of information do you get? Is it sort of full specs, technical info? And Yeah, this is all technical information that all the manufacturers will give us. If we go into it. So it's a CD-ROM version of a manual, but it saves you carrying a library around in the back of the van, I suppose. That's exactly what it is, and it, it just disperses all that paperwork. We've got rid of it all now. Yeah. Now, with all this kit on here, I mean, you, you're full of stuff, you've got plenty in the back. I can't see a place for your sandwiches, where uh, are they? I'm afraid I've left them in the fridge today, <laughs> at home. Well, here we are. We've been out on the road now for four hours without a squeak. But we've had a good time, haven't we, Doug? Yeah, we have. <laughs> but anyway, we're back here to show you just how you do get a bike on the old bump trailer, because that's worth seeing. So we've got a Team GPZ500 there, and let's see how it goes aboard. So here we go. We've got this immaculate GPZ. Doug always suggests that the owner, well, not suggest, he wants the owner to give him a hand. Then we just push, keeping the bike vertical into the bump lock. Over the top, there we go, that's it, firmly locked in position, the bike can't move backwards then, that is bump locked there and then. Then all that Doug has to do is strap the bike down, make sure it's secure on the trailer, remove the rear piece, put the old tail light assembly on and drive away and take the bike home. So we didn't get our breakdown, but it's nice to know that if you do, help is only a phone call away. After the break, a bike auction and our competition result.
So uh, buying and selling a bike can be an absolute nightmare. We all know this, don't we? So what do you do if you want to sell one? Well, you stick your advert in the magazines or in Auto Trader and all these various different journals. Or, alternatively, you just take it down to your local bike shop and they sell it for you. Or they buy it off you. Or you have someone come round to buy it from your house. It's an absolute nightmare and not everybody's so keen on that process. So, there is another option. There is the auctions. And we've come down here to Mansfield in Nottingham to the National Car Auctions, who happen to have here on a Wednesday night at the end of every month, excluding Christmas of course, a big bike auction. Would you like to have a look at it all? Follow me. There has indeed been a stigma attached to the auction. Well, maybe that was the past. Not anymore. Auctions are a nice place to come to and sell your bike, and a nice place to come to buy a bike. Now, if you were going to sell a bike and you came down here with your machine and parked it up, when you hand the keys over and tell them uh, what you want to know all about it, then simply you have to fill a form in. When you fill the form in, it will ask you some questions. Questions such as, is it an insurance write-off? Or, is there any police interest? Or even, do you owe any money on the machine? Now, if you don't fill the form in correctly, you are liable and you'll get your knuckles wrapped. They will shout at you. So, you've got to complete the form correctly and you've got to really tell the truth. And furthermore, for you, the buyer, there is a system whereby you can actually give the bike a run. You have one hour to ride it around the car park here and check it out. You can check the gears, you can check the engine, you can check whatever you want. And if there is something drastically wrong with it, you can take it back and say, not for me, thank you very much. And there's a little window on this here application form that you will read and it tells you yes or no whether you're going to be able to get a trial on it. So I know what you're asking yourself, how much will it cost me? Well, obviously it'll cost you whatever you bid for the bike you bid for. And obviously the bike is sold to the highest bidder. And on the drop of that hammer, it's yours. Assuming you do bid, of course, above the reserve that the purveyor happens to put on it. And then, once you have paid that price for that motorcycle, say £1,000, there is an additional cost to it, 50 quid plus that. So, you will pay £1,058.75. And that is it. No hidden costs, no hidden problems, just bid, enjoy it and buy one. So, that brings me to this next piece. I can hear a bid going through and I'm just going to get my secret bidder to put a bid in for the bike that I fancy. Don't be stupid, not that flipping much. What do you think, I've made of money? So while he's making a right load of racket over there, I thought I'd bring you over here to show you what different types of bikes there are. And there are an amazing array of machines. I can tell you, I've seen a trials bike. I've seen one of them uh, scooters. I've seen tatty bikes, some seriously tatty bikes. Some beautiful stuff, Fireblades. There's even an R1. And then you've got these things, a police bike. Because there is an awful lot of different type of people selling these machines. Not only is you the guy out there, the individual, there's companies, a shop might have a trade-in and he might want to bring his bike down to the auction. And then you've got fleet people, such as these police bikes. You name it, every type of person would sell it and every type of bike will be here. Seven, 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 eight is here, eight, 25, eight and a quarter, eight, 25, eight, 25, eight, two by the bit now, eight, two by the eight, two by, eight, two by, eight, two by, eight, eight, two by, eight, two by, eight, two by, eight, two by, eight, 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 two by, eight, 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 Eight the quarter of it now at eight two five. That eight two five. That eight two by now to the right now so eight the quarter bit. That eight two by. Out the way now but now says on her is that it then at eight. Two by in it. Eight where it is. Yeah. I know what you're thinking out there, it's dead easy this, isn't it? I could just go in my garage and get my rusty old heap out, give it a polish, stick a bit of petrol in it, get it running, and bring it to the auctions. But I know what you're thinking as well, you're thinking how much will it cost me? 
it'll cost you no more than 30 quid. If they flog it for you, 30 quid. If they don't flog it for you, it'll cost you a tenner. Nothing ventured, nothing gained, I say, for the sake of a tenner. I mean, you know, let's be fair. You would, wouldn't you? If you want to make space for your new superbike or whatever the case may be. So why don't you try it? Simple. And exactly what I did. I had a little bike at home I wanted to get rid of, so I brought it down to the auctions and I'm going to see what I can get for it. Hello? You haven't locked me in, have you? Hello? Well, I've got to admit, I've had an absolutely fantastic time. It's a very atmospheric place, quite enjoyable, really, seeing all the action going on here. In fact, I would suggest, even if you're not going to buy a bike or even sell a bike, why don't you just come for a ride and enjoy the atmosphere and the fun? Come out with your mates. It's in Mansfield. It's on a Wednesday night at the end of the month. It's going to be a laugh. Right then. So, you're curious, aren't you? You really do want to know how much did the R1 go for? Well, in actual fact, it didn't quite meet its reserve. It did, in fact, get bid 6,950 quid. So maybe they're negotiating as we speak. And one of the pan-European police bikes, somebody bid 1,950 quid, and in fact, is riding the thing home. And talking about bidding, all I actually did was a sort of pick me nose, twiddle me ear, and scratch me bum. And I've ended up buying this lot. And now the answer to our competition. T-Reg was of course previously used from 1978 to 1979. Congratulations to our winners. And on two wheels next week, Wayne has some alarming news on motorcycle security.